A database is a collection of data that is organized in a way that makes it easily accessed and maintained. Data is stored in tables. A row in a database is called a record and describes the collection of properties. A column in a database is called a property or a field and describes the data item in that column. Tables will usually have a column with some form of ID that is a primary key, a column that allows you to tell all records of data apart. All primary key values must be unique. Each property must have a data type that defines the kind of data that can be stored in that column. The data stored in each column cannot be broken down any further. For example, if you had a column called address, this could be broken down further into house number, street name, town, and postcode. When talking about types of databases, we often mean between flat file databases and relational databases. Flat file databases are where all data is stored in a single table. Storing data in a single table is very simple, but it causes all kinds of problems, most notably data inconsistency and data redundancy. For example, look at the teacher's table from earlier. Say we wanted to store the students that each teacher teaches. There are two ways we could do this. We could simply add two extra columns, student first name and student second name. The problem with this is now the date of a Dan Smith is repeated seven times, one for each student. Also, if you look at rows one and eight, the student John Jones appears twice as he is taking ICT and French. Duplicating data in the database is very bad as it will mean your databases get very large and this is a waste of memory. It will also slow down the searching of the database as there are now seven Dan Smiths and we don't know which one we want. Having lots of duplicated data is called data redundancy. It also causes the issue of data inconsistency. We've entered Dan Smith seven times. This could very easily lead to us making an error in one of these rows, leading to the data being inconsistent. Additionally, if at a later date we need to change some data related to Dan Smith, such as his room number, we need to update it in several places. We might accidentally miss one of the rows, creating further data inconsistency. Another way around this is to simply add new columns for all the students. The problem here is record number two. The French teacher Jenny Heenan only has two students taking the subject. This means the rest of the columns are empty. Empty space in a database is bad, as in computer memory it is not actually empty. It means system memory is being reserved, but not filled. This also means databases will get very large. The solution is to create a new table called student. This will have all the data we need about each individual student. However, we need to link the teacher table and the student table. We do this by adding a new column to the student table called teacher ID. This will contain all the relevant data from the primary key column teacher ID in the teacher table. The new column is called a foreign key and is defined as a column in one table that contains data from a primary key column in another table. We now have eliminated data redundancy and data inconsistency. We can tell all the rows apart, no data is repeated, there are no empty spaces, and all the columns cannot be broken down any further. This is now a relational database. We have two tables, also called entities, that have a link or relationship between them. An entity is a single type of object or thing in the database, and we store information about that object in a table. In this example, we have a teacher entity and a student entity. We've seen that we link tables together via relationships. There are three types of relationships between tables. Think about a table called school and a table called head teacher. There is one school and only one head teacher. This is a one-to-one -one relationship. The way to work out a relationship is to start on the left side and say how many times the right side belonged to this. Then move to the right side and say how many times the left side belongs to this. So one school 
has one head teacher, and a head teacher only has one school. Now consider a school and its teachers. One school has many teachers, but each teacher belongs to one school. This is a one to many relationship and is shown by the crow's feet. These are on the many side of the relationship. Finally, consider a student and the teachers. One student has many teachers, but each teacher has many students. This is a many to many relationship and is also shown by the crow's feet. These are on both sides of the relationship. So, a database is a way of storing data in an organized way. Data is stored in tables which are made up of rows and columns. Each individual item of data is called a record and is a row in the database. A primary key is a unique column of data used to tell all records apart. Data redundancy is when you have lots of repeated data. Data inconsistency is where data related to the same data subject does not match in all records. A foreign key is a column in one table that contains data from a primary key in another table. When you have tables linked in this way, it is called a relationship. Relationships can be one-to-one, one-to-many, or many-to-many. -many. 